Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wilkie and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello, hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to watching all Shonen Jump anime, starting with uh, our main series being Gintama, interspor interspersed with Kuroko when Crunchyroll is fucking working and I'm actually able to watch the damn episodes, and Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about Gintama, which has been a while because of all, all the scheduling things that I had the problems with me, but we're finally here to sit down and talk about episode 166, and now I'm afraid that you can hear my mom randomly yelling at the baseball happening in the background. <laughs> can you hear that at all? I can't right now, but I could for at, during the very end of the stream yesterday. I could. Okay, yeah. so... It, 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 there's nothing I can do to stop that. <laughs> she, she, has, she, she is enjoying her time off from work, and I'll be damned if I'm going to tell my mom to be quiet. She could just be as can't loud hear as anything right yeah. now. But it did, it did start picking up, and I didn't want it in the middle of the stream. Be like, "Yo, I can hear your mom," just in case people watching it were like, "What?" I um, there, there was literally nothing I could. Well. Do. <laughs> there's nothing I could. It, it, it takes her over. It she's a very passionate <laughs> woman, the same as me. You couldn't ask me to shut up during something hype, so why should I say the same to her? You might randomly hear her throughout this episode, <laughs> <laughs> depending on how good or bad the game is going. Uh, we're here to talk about Gintama, though, episodes <laughs> 166 through to 170, which uh, and features an actual mini arc in this one. Well, not a mini arc at this point. At four, at four episodes, that it's is basically arc. that's yeah. an arc. The Tama Quest arc and episode 166, which apparently is a uh, anime only, was not in the manga. It was made specifically for the anime. Um, so let's get right into it, Zen. Start us off with episode 166, which is called Two is Better Than One. Two people are better than one. <laughs> All right, so um, Hijikata is doing a stakeout because they found a foreigner faction guy who they want to arrest, like he's like staking out his house. Um, and he's getting tired because he's been there for days and there's been nothing. Um, he thinks Okita is on the other side of the building watching, but he's actually just like at a ramen stand. Um, Gintoki shows up. I, I forget what he's doing. I think he's like throwing out his garbage. Um, yeah, it is and, early morning and he is throwing away his garbage, like his manga yeah. and uh, random garbage. And he... Uh, starts like arguing with Hijikata and so Hijikata's like all right that's it I'm arresting you for fucking with uh, an investigation and so he cuffs Gintoki to his wrist and he calls uh Okita over and he's like hey come on to um come on and arrest this guy you're not helping me anyway so just take him to the police station whatever uh so instead of saving them or, or okay no so he comes up to, to like take Gintoki away and he says I'm not I'm not doing that um and so then he's like, "All right, fine. Just put give us give us the key and just you know unhandcuff us because Hijikata lost his key." And so uh, Okita instead uses his pair of cuffs to cuff Gintoki's other wrist to Hijikata's other wrist, so that they're like both hands are handcuffed to each other. And then he's like, ha, "See ya!" And he basically leaves. <laughs> and he gives um, him a like, mayonnaise jar. Yeah, for he you. says, "Wait, give me the give me the key." And he goes, "No, I hear you can have this mayonnaise." Um, and then the guy that they've been watching leaves. And so uh, Hijikata wants to go, and Gintoki doesn't want to go, so they're fighting over it. And he's like, yeah, you know what? If you get on your knees and beg me, maybe I will. And so Hijikata like, gets on his knees, and he slams Gintoki into the ground. And he like keeps doing it over and over again and smashing him down onto the ground. Uh, eventually, they agree to, or he agrees to help. Um, they go to a cafe, and they're eating. Um, And then they end up eating the mayonnaise that Okita gave them, and it turns out that there it was laxative in it. So they both have to take a shit really bad. Um, and this is like, once again, we have this Death Note level uh, shit needing skit. <laughs> yep. um, yeah, they both really need to shit, and they're trying to like argue who's going to do it. Um, and they, they make three different plans. And then they end up busting open the door to the stall, and it, they see it's, that it's a Japanese-style toilet. It's, like, not one that you can sit on up high, like a, like a Western one. Mm -hmm. um, so they end up doing it so that one of them takes a shit while the other one's doing a handstand on their hands Plan up in D. the air. That's plan D, yeah. 
Uh, they follow the guy again, and they get to the headquarters, and they get caught because uh, Sogo calls him, and like that, the call alerts everyone that they're like being spied on. And then him and Gintoki end up beating the shit out of all the guys while they're still handcuffed together. And the guy's like, you know, you guys were bitching a lot about being stuck together, but you're like doing really well. And they're like, fuck you. <laughs> uh, they end up beating everyone. And then uh, Okita shows up and uncuffs them. And he's like, hey, do you want to... Um, do you still okay. want to arrest him? And he's like, no, I don't even want to see his face. And then they leave, and it's like a anime like freeze frame of them leaving. And Okita's like, "You guys must really get along." <laughs> this is this this is masterful. The way one of that the this... funniest uh, one off episodes I think in the whole series that we've seen so far. Yes, it was very done. It was very well done. This episode is really funny. <laughs> It, like, delivers on multiple one moment, because I'm getting a call from work. I'll be right back. Uh oh <laughs> All right, I'm back after dealing with that crisis. <laughs> work. Oh, I'm, not, again, never lying when I say my work keeps me from Shonen Archive. <laughs> All right, so what was I saying? This episode is great. Um... A lot of the build-up... Uh, I think we both have said it before, but I feel like Hijikata and... Gintoki are definitely like the it's between them and Kotsu are like the, those are the three when I think of like top three characters of Gintama it is usually some yes, combination of definitely. them uh and just having anything that focuses on at least two of them is usually going to be gold and this is literally just Gintoki and Hijikata's entire relationship put to the test it's also a very funny setup and it's also done in a very funny way where Akita just shows up and goes like, eh, I think this is going to be funny. And he just fucks with them for the entire way and then suffers zero consequences for any of his actions at the end. He, he literally does it because he's like, this sounds more fun, and just leaves. Yeah, he's very honest about what he feels, where he's just like, you know what, this sounds like it'd be funnier. All right, I'm gone. Uh, here's the mayo. I put laxatives in it because I felt like at some point you're going to make him eat it and you're going to eat it. And wouldn't that be hilarious if you both had to go to the bathroom? It's great. Um, the transit... So the... I've been told this before, but the literal translation to the ending song is called I Love You. And yeah. that... The way that they transition from, like, the freeze frame at the end here into the I Love You song, which is a bunch of, like, lovey-dovey things, is hilarious. <laughs> Especially because they're like, I hate you. I absolutely hate you. To the point where I was like, you know what? This might be some... It, it, it almost rivals Naruto. Obviously, Naruto is number one in terms of the gayness factor of how yes, gay something un is. Untouchable. yeah. Yeah, but this is definitely up there of just like, yeah, they are definitely leaning into a little bit of it here. <laughs> the, like, the way that it ends on that freeze frame, both of them being like, chuh, chuh, hate that guy, hate that guy. Man, they really do love each other. <laughs> it is yeah, fantastic. Just like, wow. They really do get it. <laughs> they do. They absolutely do get it. Um, the bathroom bit is also hilarious. And also, funny enough, it is. it lasts exactly as long as you want it to last. <laughs> uh, it does that over, say, it's welcome. It's really funny, the little drawings they do for all the dudes of the different ways to go to the bathroom. Like, method A, method B, method, method C. And then you see it again when it's a Japanese-style toilet, and they explain to you why it doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, with like diagrams. Yeah, diagrams of saying like, no, it just do it doesn't work that way. They and then can't do it that way. No, can't do it that way. And then they look up ahead, and there's a giant flying plane that just says uh, D on it. He goes like, of course, Plan D. And the Plan D is just like holding it. And then they actually show a shot where you can see Hijikata's shoes. <laughs> I he... also really like um, <laughs> when uh, they they like panic after uh, plan C and them all fail. Mm -hmm. And they both are just like standing there in silence and it just says, has God forsaken us? <laughs> <laughs> really good. Really funny. It, uh, the, 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 also the animation on these upfront butt shots of them holding it in. Something yeah, else. Yeah, the to super be detailed ass clench yeah the, the the most detailed ass clench that you would ever see in an anime i think that is uh, also not in some ways <laughs> so 18 plus but it is highly detailed and it is hilarious and then when they actually go and fight 
um, at the end, it's also really well done. Um, like, when they're just fucking dudes up, because they can see, like, they, they have, like, the perfect 360 view, so the anytime one of them gets hit, the other one immediately falls in black. It's actually a really cool way of fighting with each other. <laughs> and they're able to block all the swords because their cuffs are stronger than swords. Um... And then it gets to that dude asking, like, you know what, for two dudes who are, like, super hating each other, you guys are really good at this. Yeah, the guy was really like, you know, you guys were complaining a lot, but you're really good at this, and that just made them angrier. Yep. Uh, I also like that when they're going to go arrest that dude, uh, Gintoki immediately goes to back up Hijikata, where he's like, you're under arrest. <laughs> he's, like, trying to follow up like he's a part of him, uh, which is really funny. Yeah, just in general, this entire episode is, like, super fun. Oh, I also really like it when they're like, all right, be non-conspicuous going into this cafe, and they go in dancing <laughs> with, like, a rose in the mouth. Like, they do the full tango bit going in. It's like, how is this supposed to be non-conspicuous? It goes like, and then Okita answers for the walkie-talkie. You should ask him where he got the rose. How are you watching us right now? <laughs> how are you doing any of this? amazing stuff great stuff and in general it's a really good way usually when an episode uh like this starts before a big arc where it's like oh yeah this is a major arc going for it it usually suffers a little bit not this one this one was like hitting on all cylinders <laughs> it was really yeah, well it was, done it was good the the joint uh clothesline they do to the guy on the bike at the end great mm, amazing yeah, great stuff <laughs> fantastic amazing. oh man Really good. It also makes me sad that uh, uh, Gintama was never as big enough to get its own fighting game, because I would definitely select this as a fighter. A uh, Gintoki and Hijikata handcuffed fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, a joint fighter. This would be a great unit in that fucking, what's that name? Uh, Jumpudi. It would be. I'm sad that it's not in Jumpudi. and Gintoki handcuffed together. I would return to it immediately if they both were added. This specific unit based off of this random episode. This one I would, random episode. I would be there immediately. I will be there day one if they ever do it. But yeah, just really good. And a good way to start off uh, this batch of episodes, I think. Uh, anything else to say, then? Uh, no, not really. I just thought it was very funny. It, it's definitely... Normally, I hate the ones with shit jokes in them, other than the, the one other Death Note one. And this was an exa exactly the right level of Death Note shit joke that, the, to keep me in invested. Yeah, like I said, it lasts exactly as long as you would want it to. It is able to, and then they move on from it, and then there's more episodes. It's like, it's not, the entire thing is not based off of it. Based, I think on the episode preview last time I saw it, it may have looked like the entire episode would be based on it, and that would not be as good. But the way they do it is uh, very well done. Well done, shit humor. I'm all here for it. And that's episode 166. Let's move on to episode 167. Smooth polygons, smooth men's hearts, too. Go ahead, Zen. So, uh, we start in Otose's bar, and uh, the robot maid girl from the very beginning who still works there, yep, uh, Tama. Tama, yeah, is there. And she's like, I'm a robot, I don't need to sleep. And Otose's like, yeah, you do. You know, It's bad for you if you don't sleep. Uh, and she keeps being like, oh, robots don't get sick. Robots are fine. Robots can't get ill. Um, and then she turns around and she looks like a polygon, like a like Final Fantasy VII blocky-ass yeah. character. Literally from Virtual Fighter. Yeah, <laughs> like it's it's like that. Um, Atose tells our gang, um, hey, <laughs> this is crazy. And they're like, that's stupid you're old like <laughs> you're you're old and dumb <laughs> you, they, they, that's not right uh and then thomas shows back up and she's just straight up like an nes rpg sprite i think it's dragon quest is what they said mm -hmm. um and uh everyone's like oh shit and kagura uh cuts like a radish on her head and she's like she is too sharp you need to make her round and child safe um <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and they take her to the old man, which I think is the old man that made her. Yes. I don't remember yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. the relation between the old man and her. No, no, he uh, didn't make her. Genga is just the, the he's the old man who made the uh, the murder bots to kill someone when he was working with Takasugi, right? Yes. And then it, since then, and then he's he, just been kind of on their side. He didn't make her. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. 
but he was uh, also in the f- previous Tom arc because they show like a flashback yeah. of him making the fucking well, sword. He's like the he's like the robot guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's a robot. Um, man. And they're like, fix, fix her. And he goes to try, uh, and they find out she's infected with a virus called the Taper virus. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it like keeps turning her further backward in like tech. Um, and he's like, I can't, you know, it's I, if she's too far along. I can't make a vaccine. So the only way to do it is to send you inside of her to do it. And he smashes Gintoki with a hammer, which makes him tiny and like little. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're like, oh my god. And he gives them toothpicks and throws them into her mouth. And they go, like, up into her body like a, like Osmosis Jones. <laughs> yes, uh, it is uh, Osmosis yeah. Jones, like, but and not a reference. we find out that there's, like, a bunch of guys in black jumpsuits, which are the virus. And then we see uh, a bunch of people in white jumpsuits, which are the white blood cells. And they're they're losing um and then the wait no no this this, this this one ends with them finding the one with an arrow up his a- uh, in his ass that's right and when he's like out of the water or out of the oil but yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he tells them like they're looking for the three legendary heroes mm-hmm. and it's them and that's where this episode ends and then the stuff you're talking about is follows up in the next one but that but that is the uh the end of 167 uh, which is starting to talk once again. Glad to see Tama. I'm a big fan of Tama. She re- she usually is just a robot girl who hangs out and sings the Gotta Fly Now in the background usually. Um, but I like it when she showed up because I like the previous uh, Tama arc that was in. Uh, I like the beginning bit where they're talking to each other. And no, I think in the previous episode preview before this one came in, Gintoki was saying, like, oh my god, it's been a week since Dragon Quest uh, Nine came out. Nobody tell me anything about it. I haven't gotten into the final boss yet. Don't don't tell me anything. And in Japan, Dragon Quest is, like, a huge thing, so it was just really funny to see someone mention. I have not seen Dragon Quest <laughs> Nine, the DS game, referenced in years. <laughs> like, literal years, like, since it, this actually came out, which was... Uh, sometime in 2015 maybe um so that was cool to see in general there's a buttload of dragon quest references here from like multiple of the games most of them being from the uh the 2d game um for people who don't know dragon quest is the not the first but it is the most influential it is what influenced eventually uh final fantasy and was super huge in Japan to the point where it, it started that rumor when the release date of Dragon Quest is released. It's considered a national holiday because they realized that whenever they released a Dragon Quest title, everyone always called off sick from work so that they could <laughs> sp- spend time play playing. It. Yeah, just so they could play Dragon Quest. Uh, it was that popular. It, Dragon Quest was huge. It was insane. It is what Final Fantasy is for us over here. <laughs> Not to say Final Fantasy ain't big over there, but it is a different behemoth and beast. Um, and as such, they have a lot of the cool quirks from the first Dragon Quest. So if you ever played the first Dragon Quest, it has this a thing where it says you have to look and then show them. And Tama actually does that where she's like, show medical herb, show it. Um, yeah. Oh, what's the joke she does? It, there is no response. It is only a corpse. <laughs> yeah, which is <laughs> something, which is something that you hear all the time in the original Dragon. It's like a glitch where, like, when you try and talk to someone and say "ah," but it's just a corpse talking to you. <laughs> but it's just a corpse, and she says that all the time. She keeps saying it to um, uh, Atose, which is really funny. I think at one point, Gintoki, st- Gintoki goes on this long ramble about like back in my day. Uh, we couldn't wait to explore dungeons, but now you can't see that because they're all fancy and built together. And it's not what happened to imagination, man. And then, <laughs> and then, uh, Kagura and Shipachi are like, "Why do old video game dudes die on this hill? <laughs> Why are they like this? Like, anytime you bring this up, they always like complain, and then they just start talking shit about them. And then Tama goes up to him and says, a "Give medical herb," and she, he's like, "What am I supposed to do with this? Am I supposed to heal myself from their words?" <laughs> she tries to heal him up with that, which is really funny. Um. When they're saying, like, I think there might be something wrong with uh, with Tama, it's really funny because 
the the sprite is exactly like from Dragon Quest to the point where you only see her facing forward. So even if the anime scene is at a tilt angle, you only see her facing forward and she's never on her sides or anything. Yeah, <laughs> she's always... Yeah, they just straight up put a sprite on screen, and I like it when they're like, look at her. her she's standing in place, but her legs are going up and down, which is exactly what happens with a sprite. Even when they are uh, not moving, they will always stand in place, and then they say like, oh man, she only has like one walk cycle now. He's like, that's not true. Um, later on, when she carries the princess, she's going to be able to have like a second walk cycle because she's going to be carrying her. It's like, no, idiot. There's no princess. This isn't Dragon Quest. She doesn't have another walk animation. This is it. This is it for her. And yeah, in general, there's just so there's like an insane amount of references. Even here, they're saying apparently there was even a shot of uh, Aerith. Uh, spoilers. Aris and Sephiroth when Sephiroth kills her. <laughs> In one of the flashbacks, when he starts talking about, like, uh... I like how you spoiler tagged that. I mean... didn't come out in 1997. (laughs) Listen, there's a... Okay, we're gonna stop right here. Because I need to tell you, I spoiled for a friend that Aerith Aerith dies in Final Fantasy VII. How do you spoil that? We We were at... We were eating, um... Korean barbecue. We were at Korean barbecue, and I said, "Oh yeah, like when Aerith kill when Sephiroth kills Aerith, or Aeris, or however I pronounce her, I forget." And then he put down his food, looked at me incredulously, and said, "Wokey, you just fucking spoiled Final Fantasy VII for me." And I said, "Ha ha, really?" And yeah. <laughs> I would be like what? <laughs> what do you mean? It's like yes, dude. And this was also a. Uh, 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 <laughs> Captain Ginyu from the Mew Mew Force. So he was looking at me he's like, yes, man, I was saving it. I was waiting for the, the remake to get the... I haven't finished all Final Fantasy VII. And I was like, dude, there's no fucking way that you <laughs> didn't know that she dies to Sephiroth. I know that, and I don't play... I haven't played the fucking game all the way through. There's no way you didn't know. And at this point, the other friends came in and was like, hey, what happened is, like, at this point, we're just, like, laughing because I was like, I can't believe I spoiled It's like, listen, man, I'm genuinely sorry, but also I have no idea how you avoided that. It is literally in gaming history that this... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, like, that's almost on the level of, like, the Zelda bad guy is Ganondorf. Like, you can't, you can't po- Snape kill Dumbledore level shit. Like, you yeah. can't possibly not know yeah, that, that Sephiroth that... kills Aerith in Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, and I was, like, talking him down, because he was genuinely mad at me. He was upset that I just well, wrote... What are you supposed to do? Like, it's obvious. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. He's like, no, no. He's like, no, man, that wouldn't happen to anyone. I was like, this is bullshit. I have actual Final Fantasy friends here with me, and will tell you to your face that you were acting silly, because there is no way for you to fucking avoid that. You look her up, and her, the first thing that comes afterward is death. Everyone knows. <laughs> So that's why I put that spoiler, because funny enough, I did I did spoil it for a friend of mine, <laughs> and I was like, this is insane. Um, but yeah, his, when, again, to get back onto the episode, when Gadoki starts giving his rant because he says there's too much dialogue in video games, and he says like, man, what happens to the days of just like no one talking? It's really funny because later on when he, <laughs> near the final battle, this comes up again, uh, but I just wanted to make it here. I, th- I thought it was really funny with that he's so incredulous about reading and cutscenes, and it did remind me that that DS Gintama, Gint- uh, Gintama game starts with, like, a ten-minute unskippable talking dialogue scene <laughs> before you could actually get into the game. But yeah, I thought it was, uh... And, it, and some of it might actually be to the fact that I'm a big dragon quest dude so i was looking at all the dragon quest references and going oh shit it's literally from this and it helps that Crunchyroll was like putting some up it was like this one's from three this one's from one this one's from two this one's from seven <laughs> to help out with them because they're a lot there's a lot and they're like non-stop so i en- i enjoyed it and i i liked it and i also liked the virtual when she was like briefly a virtual fighter and that tells says like are you okay and when she's like i'm perfectly fine and you look at her stance and she's in a fighting stance <laughs> she's in the same stance as that one ready to fight it was really good and i also really like when they're saying like listen for her because they're, they're explaining to her like hey i can save her But it's very likely that the tapir virus will get to her memories and she will essentially not be her. It will be like a full reset. 
He's like, are you willing to risk your lives for, for her? He's like, yes. And then immediately it follows up with the hammer shot that made it look like they fucking killed Gintoki. Yeah. <laughs> well, because he turns her like the guy, the big robot sitting there holding the hammer. And Gintoki's like, okay, what's this? And then he just slams the hammer on him. And like <laughs> blood splatters everywhere. It like dramatically splashes across Shimpachi's glasses. Yeah, it's a, it's it was a fantastic reveal, but he just fucking kills them out of nowhere, and then they show him, and he's just like tiny, and then he goes like, yeah, he's, and he just has like a bump on his head. Yeah, and then the, later on when he makes them all small, Shimpachi has two bumps for some reason. He was the only one that was hit twice with the hammer. <laughs> uh, and I also like the returning bit from the the previous Tom arc, which is that he made a uh, sword that shoots out soy sauce. Um, and he's like, this toothpick is, I've learned so much, and my genius has been just been corrected since then. And he goes like, oh, really? He's like, yeah, shoot with the toothpick. And he shoots the toothpick, and it's like a different sauce. <laughs> he's like, it's a new sauce now. It's like, you're as useless as you were back then. <laughs> this is such a stupid idea. <laughs> but, yeah, really like this episode. It was a good starting off point in what seemed like to be, was going to be a very silly arc. <laughs> going uh forward for here that's how i felt how do you feel about it zen uh yeah it was really good i liked it i thought it was really funny uh the bit with the hammer like killed me i was laughing even before the reveal <laughs> that it was just a little because it's just the, like the guy came out and i was also kind of sitting there like okay what's the what, what's the joke here and then he just fucking killed him <laughs> it's really funny <laughs> um the, the bit of them being little and, and going inside of her was funny. Uh, I really like the when uh, she keeps calling Atose a corpse because she doesn't want to answer the question. <laughs> so she's like, what item store did you even go to? And she's like, oh no, it's a corpse. She's like, stop <laughs> fucking calling me that. Would you like a... And he's like, uh, Tama handed over a leak. I didn't ask for that. She gives like, yeah, giving her like a medicinal herb and then like a, a branch. It's yeah, like which is, which is the starting item in all Dragon Quests is that all <laughs> Dragon Quest starts with you giving <laughs> having that bridge in your inventory as your main weapon. <laughs> the Cypress Stick, I think is what it's called. Really funny. And a good start to this arc. So let's go on to the next uh, the next episode. Episode 168. The human body is like a little universe. Go ahead, Zen. Episode 168, I have to wait for my thing to load. Okay, there it is. So, uh, they're going through, it's like, a, a, her body's like an RPG town of, like, people in it. Um, like Dragon Quest? It's Dragon like... Quest, yeah, it's just Dragon Quest. The whole thing is just Dragon Quest. Every time I say anything, it's just Dragon Quest. Yeah, it, um, it is really funny that they're just like, you play way too much Dragon Quest. Which is funny enough, because the first arc, when she comes in, she's like... We have to save data. This is just like Dragon Quest. It's like, I don't know where you're getting all this Dragon Quest yeah, stuff like from. They, like, they're like, oh, we gotta go to, like, uh, get a church and and, to, and stuff to, like, heal and all that. Yeah. Um, there is, like, a Tama in the game who makes an avatar of herself still as the little, like, 8-bit thing. Um, <laughs> Which might be... Like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sorry. We have to go get the king. The king of the white blood cells or whatever. The... Leukocytes? Yeah, the, the, the leukocyte king. Yeah, but we, yeah. Good luck pronouncing this because this is going to come up again. Yeah, it, it's a, it's a not a good word. Um, but the white blood cell. And they're like, yeah, we, the, you're the heroes from another, and they keep calling them midget heroes. I don't know why. Apparently, um, this the the virus itself is it is a reference to a real virus. Um, I think it has here in the notes somewhere. The Ishinbushi. The literal translation is the one-inch midget uh, computer viruses. <laughs> I think that's why they keep saying it, so that's why they're using like the literal translation of why they keep calling them midgets, is that it's a reference to this very specific thing. And you probably would not catch that. <laughs> like They don't explain that in here. I, this is someone going like, listen, <laughs> it, it's not just them being really, really weirdly insensitive to, to small people. There is a reason for it. Is literal translation is that. So, <laughs> fair enough. All right, fair enough, yeah. Um, so, they're like, all right, here's our, our ultimate warriors. And it's like an old lady and a dog and all this stuff. And he's like, no, this is not good enough or whatever. Um, and they are like, actually, the whole kingdom has fallen to the virus. They're all wearing evil bodysuits. It's just 
more dudes in black suits instead of white suits. Yeah, they use the poof mirror, which shows their original form, which is another Dragon Quest item. <laughs> um, and so they... Uh, they get attacked by the corrupted evil king, uh, but then the dog, like, goes feral and, like, attacks him. <laughs> And then the dog is actually a person, and it's revealed to be uh, Gintoki in Dragon Quest hero form. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're they're like separ- they're like two different people, obviously. But yeah, um, they call him the he. They say he's the true uh, Luka, Luka, the Luka true king. king. Yeah, yeah, the true king. We'll call him king from here on out. The king. Yeah, king works. Um, king Toki. <laughs> K- king Toki. <laughs> Uh, and then they're, they like start arguing with him, like, cause him and Gintoki don't like each other because they're the same person. So Gintoki yeah. hates people that are like him. Um, and they keep arguing like, oh, I'm the only one that can save Tama because I'm the hero or whatever. You, you're not enough. And they like keep fighting. Um, and all of the kingdoms have, have now fallen to the virus. And so the taper virus is taking over. Um, and then one of the soldiers is like, sir. The the King Toki Kingdom. Uh, there was a, a heroes that were there. One of them was from Dragon Quest, and the others <laughs> are people. Uh, and they're like, "Oh no, it's the legendary like midget heroes. We have to get to the the evil lair or whatever." Um, and then they are like, they end up showing up at the evil lair, like overlooking it from a mountainside. Yeah, and that's uh, the start of the next episode. This one ends with them overlooking the Archfiend's lair. It's like an evil doom mountain. I was about to say it's like Mount Doom, but with like a a, a cackly face on them. <laughs> if Mount Doom had a cackly face <laughs> of uh, like a pumpkin yeah. on it, yeah, it's like like a jack o' lantern head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that is episode one sixty eight. I have some stuff here because this actually starts with a another game reference because they say um, loading. Can you put it like they basically? It's similar to so the original Dragon Quest had a password system because this was so early in the days of like jrpgs they didn't have actual save file system that would come in the next dragon quest but originally they had a password system that you'd have to put in and they actually remembered it for this one because i was like holy shit that's right that first that's why that first dragon quest is so hard to go back to if you try and play it on the original uh famicom or nets it's because it uses a password system (laughs) Oh, to save your place? Oh, that's yeah. so awful. Yes, it wasn't until later games that they actually implemented the real save game, and that's because it was so early on in the in the RPG style days that they didn't even think about that. Like there wasn't like imagine trying to play any of the Final Fantasy games where they're like, okay, no, this is your password. Remember it for next time. <laughs> yeah, write down your forty eight character long password to get yeah. back here. So they did, uh, I love this bit where they're just like, you know what, I don't, do you remember your password from the previous episode? It's like, no, I don't remember my episode. I didn't know that we were saving a password. <laughs> I didn't know we would be doing this. So he's like, eh, whatever, we'll just put in some random words and we'll see what pops up. Which is something I actually totally did as a kid. When there was a password system, I would just put in random things to see if it would, anything interesting would pop up or if I was able to just skip a level ahead of time uh so i was like oh that's cool that this is in here they really went full ass on this one they really commit to the bit of it and i loved it but when they put in their password they end up in a completely different game um called uh uh, tomatopia which is a parody of a portopia which is a serial murder case game from the original famicom that never came over here but this is the game that Aonuma played, and that's what he, uh, like, if you look at the, there's, like, a long list of, like, Japanese developers who played this game, and they were, like, influenced by it, like, Kojima was influenced by this game, Aonuma, this is the first game he ever played, and that would eventually, what would get him to, like, want to be in game development, and eventually be the dude behind the Zelda series and shit like that, so I was like, wow, and even, I was, I was, I was going for it, I was like, oh man, is this that old fucking Famicom game? And it totally was, and I was like, this is, this is fucking rad. I, this is 100% hitting up everything for me. <laughs> Every little tiny reference you can think of, it was here for me. Um, 
and then the actual episode when he goes in there um i also really like what she actually says here because too she's like i confess please don't do it i'm the culprit <laughs> she like they like uh, grill her for a little bit to say like D- were you the murderer because then she goes like yes i'm the murderer please forgive me and then gitoki says ah so tama was the murderer i guess that's the end of the arc then it's like <laughs> no <laughs> stop yourself <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> there's no murder here um and then when we get to the actual episode, I really like it because they're actually playing it very similar to how I would play Dragon Quest, which the, or any JRPG that is old in this time where they're just like, okay, we're in a new town. What do we do? And he's like, I immediately hit up the casino. And he's like, I play. I always play all the mini games, and I try and make it so that I have all the equipment before I can actually finish the story, <laughs> before I can actually go up any higher, so I have the good weapons. Which is actually something I also did in uh, old game, like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest, where I'm like, okay, new town, how much money do I need for the best armor? Okay, I guess I gotta go out in there and fight some fucking, if it's Dragon Quest, it's slimes. But if it was like a Final Fantasy, wolves or whatever, goblins, whatever I can find until I can have enough money to get the highest stuff. Um, it's really funny because the... the Shimpachi is saying that when he's going through the, uh, when they're going to go save in the church, why do we need to go save in the church? And then Kentucky immediately starts talking shit. He's like, oh, you're the kind of guy who doesn't like save right away, right? You're just like, oh, let's just go to the main story. He's like, it's literally pointless to save this early on in the game. <laughs> why would you ever do it this way? <laughs> literally nothing has happened. Just continue the story, please. Um,. I like when they actually get to the king, and it turns out that the king, at the first instance, is, like, really shitty at what he's doing. Um, like, he tries to say, like, I'll aid you with whatever, and then Gintoki and the rest are like, alright, give us the access to your entire army, and give us your treasury as well. And Shinpachi's like, it sounds like we're actually just kind of shaking them down. We're supposed to be, like, the legendary heroes, and we're shaking them <laughs> down. Um... And it's funny when he presents the dog and the old woman. Because he's like, okay, you didn't offer us any soldiers. This dog clearly looks like it is... You can see the prince in the background crying. This is this is a dog that belongs to the prince that you want to get rid of. And you see the prince like, please don't take my dog. <laughs> uh, and then the, with the mother, he's like, this is clearly your mother. He's like, no, it's not. It doesn't matter that I had a conversation with the queen about, like, hey, we have to do something with our mother, and this is not my way of, like, offloading my issues onto you. No, no, she's a fierce warrior. If you get the mirror, you'll see her for what she really is. And then um, that leads into Tama using the poof mirror, which is really funny because then they say, like, wait, how do you actually have that? She's like, oh, God, my mom, something crazy just happened in baseball. She's (laughs) (laughs) Um... She reveals it, and she's like, oh, well, I'm literally just Tama. I can just find it in my body. It's not that hard for me to get this. Um, So she reveals everything, and then that's when you get the reveal that everyone's there. And it's really uh, nice, because I remembered, like, oh, man, Poof Mirror. And then when actually when the King Toki shows up, he's, like, badass. (laughs) Because he, like, wipes out everyone from the second that he gets revealed. Like, even when he was the wolf, and he was, um biting him he looked really cool there and then when they actually unleash him he like takes out every single one of them that they were fighting (laughs) with like his spell and yeah in general this is another episode that i just really liked again (laughs) more video game references and cool gintoki stuff with two gintokis is enough to satiate me how do you feel zen uh, yeah, it was cool. I liked the RPG stuff. I usually like when they do video game spoofs, even though it feels like it's always Dragon Quest. It's usually pretty funny. <laughs> it is. Um, I liked the bit where the dog turns into the Gintoki King. That was mm-hmm. pretty funny. Um, I'm all for it. It was good. Yeah, yeah. Not my favorite of the, the episodes of this. N- no, no, for sure. The fun. especially these last two are really strong. <laughs> yes, yes. So the let's... last two is is crazy um yeah i i would agree much better than the than this one the, not to say this one was bad no um but 69 and 70 are like big time yeah big i i agree but this one's definitely still very good with it's just funny that when you have four good episodes 
it's not to say that they're all bad, but one of them just has to be weakest, and this one just so happens to be the weakest, but it's still a very good episode, if that makes sense. It just shows the quality of stuff <laughs> when something is just so good. Um, it can sometimes make the stuff that is also good not look as good by comparison, I guess. Yes. the way to say yeah. it. Yeah. Let's go on to episode 169. Nice. The Chosen Idiots is the name of the title. <laughs> <laughs> so uh they get to the evil lair the king is like oh this used to be the the main hub like system it was, it's like her hard drive or whatever mm -hmm. uh but the virus has taken it over and it's the evil lair now um kentoki and king start fighting over which one of them is like the group leader um and they keep like like fighting each other again and so kagura <laughs> takes over um and Shinpachi's like, damn, Kagura is the hero. That's cool. Uh, and then Gintoki's like, all right, let's jump. And then King jumps after him and, like, lands on him. And they start grabbing each other and, like, slamming each other into the ground. Yeah, he says, wait a uh, moment. And then he's, like, literally above him, stomping. Yeah, he, he, Gintoki looks up and it's just, like, the soles of his boots as he slams down onto him. Yep. Um, and then, like, he starts walking and Gintoki grabs his legs and pulls them out from under him and slams him into the ground. And they uh, keep going together. And then Tom was like, okay, maybe having these two on the same team was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. previous episode, she says, my two strongest, I brought them together. It should work. And then <laughs> Shimpaji says, hey, did you ever think about the fact that, that maybe they wouldn't like each other? She's like, I fear <laughs> I've made a grave miserror <laughs> in judgment. <laughs> yeah, I made a horrible mistake. Um, eventually, they do get inside... Um, because the, the, they get attacked by the virus, but they're attacking each other, and they, like, accidentally uh, kill the virus that's attacking them while they're trying to hurt each other. In, a, like, uh, a, a Dragon Ball-style fight, even though it is Dragon Quest, it really, yeah. there's, like, auras and stuff flying around. <laughs> they have a beam struggle. They have a beam clash. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, and then they kind of have a talk where they, uh, they're like, what the fuck is your problem? And King is like, look, I know you're here to help, but you have lives outside of this, and this is literally my only purpose. So, like, let me let me do it. And he leaves, and then he ends up getting attacked by a mimic that's, like, ripping his arm off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it's like, ah, oh, Jesus. And so they end up helping him out. Um, and then Tama kind of has a conversation. It's like, you know, the more that I watched you and, like, modeled this guy after you the more that the model ended up becoming more human than i was uh, and i don't want him to die like this and i want you to go and help him uh, so he does end up going and they kind of run into the arch fiend um and then and then tama dies here yeah well because it's like tama is the arch fiend right it's like tama yeah. under the mask yeah she she says that like the data that they're trying to bad that that the backup data had they gone into it so she's fading away and she thinks that this is basically the end of her that's yeah. what she's she's saying here is like i think this is this is it for me so no matter what please help him and then she fades away and then they get to the archfiend where there you go go ahead continue, yeah and sorry. the archfiend is like haha i've done it I've, I've merged with tama which is why tama's the one under the mask and everything um and then the king's body recognizes the the virus as tama so he can't attack um, and so they're, they're, they're like, haha, I've done it. And then Gintoki just flies in from off screen and kicks her square in the face. And then the episode <laughs> ends. Bro, this fucking kick. Especially because he's, he says the, the spell from Dragon Quest, Firebane. <laughs> <laughs> And he says it. And he goes like, "Whoopah!" And especially after after the, 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 the like the literal thing is like, "Can you kill Tama?" Ho 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 ho! <laughs> Their immediate fucking kicks in the face. So good. <laughs> and then they, the the live reaction from everyone else as they go Whoa. like that. They're like face of pure dread when he feels like you know you're attacking her, right? It's amazing. So episode 169. Uh, this episode is really good. Um, there's a bit here at the beginning where they just start talking shit on Kirill, which is a, a character from Dragon Quest uh, 4. Uh, Dragon Quest 4 is maybe one of my favorite games of all time. And when they said, like, this character is the Shinpachi of Dragon Quest, I was like, I had to look him up. I was like, 
is he? And then I looked at him and was like, oh, yeah, this dude. Because I had actually literally forgotten who Carol is, even though Dragon Quest is one of my favorites. I looked at him and was like, holy shit, they're right. He is the Shinpanji of the game. Because <laughs> you kind of just kind of forget about him, that he exists, because there's so many cool characters in Dragon Quest IV. <laughs> um, but yeah, they start talking They start talking shit about him, and Shinpachi starts taking offense. He's like, why are you all talking? Why are you being so mean to Carol? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at one point, aren't they like, uh, we should just let Carol die? <laughs> Yeah, we should just let Kirill die. Okay, so... Yeah, because they're like, okay, so... You know, you're you're useless, like Kirill. Because Kirill used a one-hit spell. He'll If you don't tell him, he'll use it on the Archfiend, even though the Archfiend is immune to one-hit kill spells. He's useless. He's dumb. So they're like, okay, he's like, okay, so what's our plan here? And then Tom was like, our plan is, I think, we can be... We're, like, at an impasse. Here's our plan. We will just not heal Kirill. <laughs> that, that is the, the plan that they came up with. Because they're having an argument over how to attack the castle, and Gintoki wants to go in there, guns blazing, and uh, the king says, you're the kind of player who reaches, who reaches the Archfiend, and he has, like, one HP and one MP. Like, you have no strategy, you have no tact, you're nothing. <laughs> you're gonna lose if you're the party lead. We'll go with mine, we'll conserve our stuff, and then Gintoki starts talking shit on him, saying... You're the kind of leader where you die midway into the dungeon with full MP. <laughs> that is the kind of strategy that you're using here. Um, that's really good. Uh, and when they actually start fighting each other and they're having like a full on like Dragon Quest fight, but they're also naming like detergents. Um, yeah, that's like their special move is like cleaning sprays. Yeah, they're all cleaning sprays and they're just getting them by accident. <laughs> They're winning that way. And then eventually they end up creating a, they their forces, their power like joins together and it makes a giant purple blast. And it causes a huge explosion. And then they cut to the outside of Tama's body as a tiny miniature explosion goes off. And like yeah. a smoke a smoke cloud comes out. Um and then he then the the the, the, the old man is like looking, he's like, huh. I hope they're okay in there. <laughs> that was a little bit concerning, but okay. I'm sure they'll be fine. Um, I also like that when King's kind of giving his speech about how, like, hey, why does it only have to be me? Um, how come you don't want our help? And he's like, well, um, you guys have other people. If you care enough about Tama, that means you care enough about other people. And there, I don't want anyone else to go. So, therefore, I'm the only one who's specifically just built. My only function is to protect Tama. So that's what I'm going to do. And then it immediately gets disheveled by the the mimic. And when he's being attacked with the mimic, he's like, uh, let me <laughs> let me solo and save Tama after you guys get me out of this. <laughs> after you guys free me from this, then we'll go. Um, I also like the conversation that... Um, also, after the, the, the giant explosion, and they get inside the Archfiend's um, palace... Thomas says, like, you know, that went exactly how I planned it, and now her text box is red because she's dying. Because <laughs> she took too much damage. I mean, so they're like, it's red. What are we supposed to do with that? Yeah, well, how are we supposed to help you? It's, it's like, no, it's fine. Um, oh, my God, it's going real bad at baseball right now. <laughs> it's the, We're two steps away from Spanish screaming. She's currently chatting, yes, yes, yes. Anyway, I've never anyone get hyped for baseball before? Uh, my mom loves sports. She loves all forms of sports. You should see her during soccer. She'll <laughs> if this was during soccer, we could not record. We you would not be able to hear it over the screams. Um, I really like the speech that Tom gives to him, saying like, "Listen, um, it's over for me. It's 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 so Jover for me. It's not even funny, but." He's now like you, and he's more human than I ever was. Please save him. And while this is happening, it's actually real sick, because she starts, like, fading away into, like, pixel dust. And she says, like, forget about me. Um, And as she, like, is breaking down, you see, like, she says, like, my friend who has protected me for so long, uh, protect my other friend. And she's, like, going, like, my friend. It's like a, a dying out robot. Like, my friend who had... It's, like, very clear that she is struggling for the end of it. It's kind of like when, um... It's kind of like the when a toy is has been going on too long, and it's distorted, and it's, like, fading out. It's kind of like that. 
I thought it was uh, very well done, and that's the part of this arc where I was like, damn, they're really going for something. They're going for deep. I did not expect it to go this deep for, for this, and this is the direction it was going. And then I also really like that that Arch Fiend reveal when it's like, yeah, I'm now in control of Tama. This is 100% me. Can you kill him? Immediate kick to the face. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah, doesn't even hesitate at all. No, and it's amazing because in the next episode he explains his reasoning, but his reasoning was, um, basically he, it, which is it goes back to the first episode where he says like I don't like text in games, but he's like I skimmed it. Like these these final characters talk too much. I just want to get to the action, so I'm like I'm pretty yeah, sure. Moment he's like I don't read it anyway. Yeah, I, I don't read it. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> it's like no, you should have read that. It was very important. But yeah, this was a fantastic episode. Um, good fights, good jokes, good emotional story beats, and I'm uh, a fan of it in general. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, full agreement. Very funny, very good. Both good serious moments and funny moments, which is when Gintama is at its peak, when one when one of those two things isn't holding the other one back. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, really good stuff. The kick in the face at the end was fucking comedy gold. Mm-hmm. That shit was amazing. Perfect. I think that's probably why the previous episode is not as good as the other three. It's because I, I, I want to say in every single one of these episodes, it has a moment like this, except for the previous one, where they just, like, you expect it to go one way, and then, like, bam, like the hammer shot at the end of the previous um, episode, and then this one, it's it's really good. Fantastic. Stuff. More, <laughs> more random acts of violence. More unexpected acts of violence, the better. Uh, and also, it cannot be emphasized enough. He kicks the shit out of her. Yeah, it, it's like a massive kick. Yeah, she's like bleeding from the nose and everything. It's real bad. But yeah, that is episode 169. Let's move on to episode 170, which is the English title is And Into the Legend. And I'm pretty sure almost all of these... I think this one, I think they say it specifically, like, this is supposed to be the fourth part of the series, but this, the the name of its title is taken from a Dragon Quest, but it's not taken from Dragon Quest 4, it's taken from 3. So they complain about that, I think, in the, the next episode preview, where they're just like, and Into the Legend is the next one. It's like, isn't that the title for Dragon Quest 3 and not 4? Even even though the next one is Tama Quest Part 4, you're using the Part 3 one? I thought it was funny. That's it. Go ahead, Zen. Tell us what happens in episode 170. 170, uh, they're all kind of... Or Gintoki's like stomping the the bad guy, and then King starts attacking him and like hitting the bad guy indirectly because he's like, that's still Tama. You, you can't hit her. And then the Archfiend is like, you guys just don't give a shit about her at all, do you? <laughs> um, and then they all end up joining in, uh, and they start trying to... Yeah, he switches to... Uh... The, the king's father or whatever yeah. and that makes the other ones be like Haha, this is stupid and they also start <laughs> um, yeah we have no emotional investment with his father <laughs> yeah they're like we don't give a shit um and so they uh they're like beating on him and then the they end up unplugging him from the the like seat that he's in which separates him from tama for a little bit uh, but then he's like, oh, I, you know, have all the highly advanced tech of this this robot. I am also now capable of more things. And he ends up um, pixelating them, like he infects them. So Kagura gets pixelated uh, because it's no longer a virus. It's grown into like a real one. Mm-hmm. Um, Shimpachi also gets hit and it's like his lower body is transformed and his upper body isn't. And he and looks like... like- <laughs> He looks like yeah. the gun tank from Gundam. Yeah, and they call him Shin Tank. Shin Tank. <laughs> Shin Tank, yeah. Um, and then it looks like Gintoki gets hit uh, in the dick with it, and he's like, God, why is it always in the dick? <laughs> yeah, he, he gets a pixelated dick, and they don't show yeah, it, Yeah, he gets really mad about it. Um, and then... Gintoki, King is like, I'm the only one that has to die here because it's all that I'm for. And then Gintoki's like, no, I'm not leaving you because Tama didn't want me to. Um, so they end up going together and they're like, oh, you know, we're, we'll are we we'll do this as brothers or whatever. 
they start fighting, and he shoots, like, a giant uh, blast at them, and they shoot a big blast back. They, like, double charge their way, and they do, like, a big beam struggle thing. It, it is um, almost exactly like the father-son Kamehameha moment, yeah, except for it is much. the Gintoki Gintoki. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they're, they're both starting to pixelate, um, and then the king is like, all right, my leg is pixelating. I can't move, so I have to just stay here and hold this blast back while you go and kill him. Um, and Gintoki's like, if I do that, you you can't survive because the two of us together are barely holding on. And he's like, it's okay, you know, I'll, I'll be fine. And they fist bump, and Gintoki runs off. Uh, and then the bad guy quickly starts winning. Uh, the sword, his like sword breaks, and he's grabbing it with his bare hands like a Dragon Ball character. Mm-hmm. And he says that, um, you know, I I can't live for someone else's sake, but I can die for my brother. I think is what he says. He says directly, um, I cannot live for the sake of another, but grant me the right to die for a friend, which is maybe the most <laughs> badass, yeah, a badass thing to say. Um, and then he like starts using his life power to to power up to block the blast as long as he can. Uh, and then Gintoki is also powered up by this, and he kills him. Um. And they, they call the king also uh, Sakata Gintoki, so they, like, share the name. And then the uh, there's a loudspeaker that's like, okay, the virus is dead now. Uh, if you're in a white jumpsuit, start making babies. If you're in a black jumpsuit, please switch to white and start making babies also. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes to uh, Kagura and Shinpachi, who are um, back to normal along with Gintoki. Everyone's recovered except for King, who is dying because... Um, he used up all of his life force and they're like oh you know we both kind of failed to keep our promise because i said i would protect you and, and you said you would survive um and they they kind of like joke around a little bit toward the end um and then this is where it's revealed that tama was able to survive and she's like a tiny yes. little mini pixel now yeah but she's she is okay and so she's gonna um, shrink them down, and then this is they're they're basically they're saying like we're not letting King die, we're gonna shrink you down and we're gonna put you in him so we we can fa- basically what happened to Bakugo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> they're gonna do the King here. Yeah, and then they're sitting and talking and they're having like a little a little conversation, and he's like, so you know what would you the real Kentucky do in a situation like this? And then he says, uh, smile, and then the credits roll. Um. And then we see, we cut to it, the end credits, like, afterward. Mm-hmm. Uh, we see a bunch of viruses attacking, and all of the, um, all of the white blood cell people are like, How, what are we going to do? We're not ready. And then King shows up and draws his sword, and they're like, we're going we're gonna to do this no matter what. We're always going to win. And then they, they jump in, and it, like, freeze frames, right, as they go to fight the, the new virus. Yeah. And then it ends. Yeah. Oh, fantastic ending to an arc. This is... <laughs> this was a really good ass episode. Um, first of all, we have to just make it say here the end credit song goes so fucking well. It's so good, dude. It's I love so that song. Good. When it first showed up, I was like, "This is a really good song." And as it's gone on for more, I'm like, "No, this just feels like the ultimate anthem for Gensama." <laughs> mm-hmm. Just something feels so good. I've even it's to the point where I'm like, because uh, it's funny enough, because I was listening for this one in Shonen Archive because I can't use the fr- I couldn't use the first opening song and I couldn't find a good cover for it. I found a um, pixel version and that's the song that plays at the beginning of every Shonen Archive for Gintama and it shows up here and I was like, oh wait a minute, when it hit, I was like, wait a minute. And first of all, it triggered me because I was like, wait a minute, is it time to edit this? Because I'm so used to hearing that beginning opening theme to mean like, okay, I need to figure out the right place to put the intro between me and Zen. So every time it plays, <laughs> it completely like, um, it rewires me. Um, if I could find a one that wouldn't strike my channel of the "I Love You" song, I would one hundred percent do it because it's just such. A oh, good it's gonna song. absolutely just tank the channel if you do that. But I know I, if, if uh, I ever it's find so it, good, dude. it's so good. Yeah, especially the all the moments that you see here from this arc, it just fits so well, and it goes so. It's like the right level of like. Um, it just fits with it. It's so funny because you don't know the lyric. We we except for the parts where they say "Do you, baby?" That's basically the only parts we know are the ones in English. It just seems to fit so well with everything, and it's really good. Yeah, it goes crazy, and then the uh, 
when, when we went to record this, I was like, I can't start yet because I'm playing the credits again. And, and Wilkie was like, okay, yeah. And then I got another message a second later that's like, hey, I'm also playing the credits again now. So <laughs> I need to wait a little bit longer too. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's, it just, it's <laughs> so fantastic. It's going to be real sad when it, it unfortunately goes, but we enjoy it here while it lasts. Um, this episode, just to go back to the start of it and talk about the things I liked about it. Obviously, the all the stuff with the archween is really good. Um, I really like when he was going to switch into the father and they just started immediately shit canning him and they're like, whatever, we're bored. And also it's really cliche to do the final boss is your father thing. So, you know, we don't really, <laughs> we don't really care. We really, we're here for Tom, but we're not here for your, <laughs> whatever you got going on. Um, I also like that part where though where Gintoki is explaining, like I said previously, his reasoning, which is like, yeah, I skimmed it. It should be fun. Um... I thought that was really funny, and it was a good callback from the start of the episode. Uh, when he starts fighting, and he goes into, like, his god form, and he's like, I'm a god, and I was like, yes. The only way... This would not be an authentic episode based off a of Dragon Quest or a JRPG if it did not... Fe- or an RPG, as they call it in Japan. <laughs> in Japan, it's just an RPG. <laughs> um... It would not be one of these if it did not end with them killing a god for the final boss. Yeah, that's just how it has to be, you know? Yeah, it has to be this way. Um, when he turns Kagura into a, a sprite, it's really funny. Because um, she's like, I can't I can't move the way I want to. And then she eventually starts crying to Gintoki where she's like, I can't move, I can't do anything that I want in this body, it sucks so much. When uh, Shinpachi gets hit by it, uh, Gintoki says, like, uh, he realizes, like, why did it only hit my lower part? And then it goes to Gintoki, and he's like, oh, thank God. Shinpachi, you're okay. And he's talking to his glasses. Because <laughs> the glasses are okay, so therefore uh, Shinpachi is <laughs> the okay. The glasses are okay, so Shinpachi's fine. <laughs> yep. Uh, I really liked it when they started, when he's like, you kind of, he's like, you know, this new look, you look a lot like Gun Tank, because <laughs> I am a big proponent of the Gun Tank from Gundam. It's probably the only Gundam I could name off the top of my head is Gun Tank. <laughs> There's an entire video on my channel dedicated to Gun Tank <laughs> from when we played the... Yeah, I, I died when they were like, Kagura, Shin Tank. <laughs> Shin Tank. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had Shin Tank for such a small time, but I enjoyed every bit of it. Um, that was all the funny stuff. I liked it when, uh, King and Gintoki are having, like, this heart-to-heart, um, where he starts, like, saying, like, because King is currently feeling like he's not actually a, a person. He's feeling like he is a thing. Like, even though he has these human emotions, he's not seeing it that way. And he's built off of Gintoki, so he's very stubborn in a lot of the ways. And I like the, the, the kind of, like, back and forth he has with Gintoki, because Gintoki's like, listen... I know that you're based off of me. So that means that you're kind of a, <laughs> you're kind of hard to deal with in general. But I know that if Tama wanted us for one thing, which was the, for to leave her behind and for you to be able to move on, and I know for a fact that you would hate that. So we're not doing that. We're going to save them and we're going to do it together and that's just the way it's going to be. And I really liked it when he actually, um, King actually recognizes at the end, he's like, this is so dumb. I threw away my life and it wasn't even for Tama, it was for you guys. So he actually was able to break the, um, the loop that he had thought himself in there, which is that I'm only here for one thing, and that is to defend Tama or die for Tama. That is it. That is the only thing I do. So that was really nice. Um, in general, a lot of like the self reflection on Kintoki. It also kind of makes it makes it a little bit sad because of that final moment that they're having, even when everything's like all said and done, and they're like sitting in their wait. Like, like the old man has showed up and he's gonna make them small again with a new hammer, <laughs> so they can go inside of um, King and save him. King has a moment where he's like, you know, it really does suck to be based on you, cause. Even with everything that's happened now, I can't offer any words of gratitude and I can't cry. So what do you do? So let me tell you, you're the actual original. What do you do? And that's when Gintoki just tells him, you know, smile. And that's enough. And I thought that was actually a deeper look into Gintoki. Because actually, if 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 we've thought about it for all the actual episodes of 
Gintama, I don't think we've actually ever seen him cry. I don't think that's something that's ever happened. Have we seen other characters? Oh, so. no, yeah. Even with all the stuff of, like, Okita's sister, it's something that he's not done. So it kind of paints a portrait of a person of where he is right now, where it's someone who's just, like, especially with all the stuff that he's gone through in the war, maybe it's just someone who's just, like, I just don't have anything left to give in that in that regard. So I try and show it in other ways. It's it's a it's a it's a really sad kind of character look into him, and it's actually delivered in a way that I thought was well done because it is literally Gintoki talking to himself, and because it is a, a copy that was made by Tama, really well done. Obviously, when he starts fighting in the Kintoki, when they do like the fist bump at that point, I was like, please don't die, I can't. I yeah, can't. As, well, okay. As soon as they're like, I only exist for this one purpose. I was like, you're gone, buddy. You're, you're, it's, <laughs> so you're out of here. Yes, and I don't know if it hurts more because you look like Kintoki and you act like Kintoki, but I actively don't want to see Kintoki go in any capacity. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, and the, oh, that's so good. That moment they have where they're like, you know what? A man based off of you, I could have, you know, like, if we can have this, I can have a drink with a brother. It's like, whatever. I think alcohol the idea of drinking alcohol sucks but if you got water i'll gladly share that with a brother and they do a fucking fist bump and they're like yeah let's go and then they're doing the <laughs> father son kamiyamiya fighting against it and he's telling him no you got to go in there and fight him and he's like don't worry i can handle it and then when he's doing like the inner speech to himself when he says like i can't live for the i cannot i cannot live for the sake of another but grant me the right to die for a friend it's so such a good fucking line <laughs> Yeah, it's such a good line. And at that point, pop I was... Off. Yeah, it's such a good pop-off. And then when he's using his life force energy, and he, he's, like, giving his his final line, which is, like, you think you damn viruses can defeat uh, the the Lu- Lu- leukocyte king? Defeat Kentucky? And then, like, he fucking pops up out from the air and completely... They do, like, a double four life force attack, basically, because he's... Gintoki's hitting him from the top, he's hitting him from the bottom. Oh, it's done so well. It's maybe... Again, Gintoki is really good at these, like, heroic entrances and also finishing off the bad guy. This is definitely one of the top ones for me, because he just pops out of nowhere and he's just, like, telling him, like, I don't know who the fuck you think you're messing with, but this is not enough for to beat Gintoki. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he slams him down, and it's amazing. And yeah, this this was a real. I did not expect, especially these last two arcs. I did not expect it to. I I was expecting like, oh yeah, it's gonna be a good, fun, like kind of sit back and relax kind of arc. And funny enough, it does something very similar to the um, the previous arc where the uh, close to the ending of the episodes got a little bit more emotional. But this one just happened a little bit sooner, where it was like the last two episodes were a little bit more um, emotional while still being funny, and then they hit it off for a really good way of finishing it. And, yeah, I think this one, just in general, these like a, a good arc, four episodes, tells the story, brings it all home, especially by the end of it. It was all good. I like seeing the, ep- the epilogue at the end where he's like, nah. He's just to show him, like, I'm still in this body and I'm still protecting it because I'm, I'm fucking King Toki and we're going to get this shit done. Let's go. <laughs> Really nice, really good, and a good send off for the arc. So I thought it was a fantastic episode. What do you feel, Zen? Yeah, it was great. Uh, perfectly fits the Gintoki or Gintama theme of like, hey, this arc is really fucking stupid. Oh, you're crying <laughs> at the end of it. Actually, <laughs> uh, it was really good. Um, yeah. I don't know. It, it was it was great. I was I was definitely welling up by the end. If it wasn't for fucking Crunchyroll breaking right at the end of this arc. Was, you can see my tweet of it when it happened to be live. I was like, <laughs> you son of a bitch. Oh, it was such a good moment. It was so good. It was oh, masterclass stuff. And yeah, like you said, you just, we even this many episodes in, it's still surprising to me that they can pull this off. Like, you just don't see it coming. <laughs> even though at this point... Um, you would think you'd be able to, but they just keep it so that you just can't predict where it's going at any given moment, that, uh, it keeps it fresh, and it keeps it nice, and, yeah, we're 170 episodes deep in now, Zen. Damn, 170 episodes, we're 
fucking going. Yeah, and we're pre- getting pretty close. I think this is a good time to... Do you have anything else to say about this episode before we move on? I do not. All right, so let me say, uh, we're getting... I think we're almost at the halfway point of how many episodes to go. The final episode is 369. We only have 200... Uh, no, we have 199 episodes to go. But pretty soon when we get to the ending of a lot of these episodes... Um, we're going to have to do them in large batches because there's a lot of arcs that happen all at once. So it okay. seems like even though we have 199 episodes plus um, two movies to go through, um, we might be heading towards closer to the end game of it, actually. And we won't have any more. Like, even looking at to the, the stuff to go through for next week. Next week is episodes 171 to... 176 which we'll have to cover all six episodes because the thing that follows after it is the red spider arc and that is i think the next big arc so because it's a big arc we have to specifically separate it from the other ones um so next week should be 171 to 176 and then followed up will be episode 177 to 181, which will be the Red Spider arc. And then from there, it is um, some mini episodes. We can probably do, yeah, n- another four batcher probably after that one. And then it's like almost all the episodes left in here. It, it is the way the way it looks at it, it's like pretty soon we're gonna get to the point where there's gonna be a like less of the um the in between episodes basically there'll be a lot more like arc based stuff i think going forward Got it. yeah and also apparently at the end of this season which is episode 201 that's when there was a long hiatus from gintama and then when we come back it will be basically in a it, it, we have i'll have to remember I'll maybe if you know if you remember the specific hiatus for it maybe tell us when we get to it but it'd be interesting to know like how long it actually lasted because i remember this this is when the some of the hiatus stuff for gintama started happening where they were just like legitimately off for a very like years at a time and people weren't even sure if they were gonna finish gintama <laughs> it was it was like yep. one of those kind of situations where it's like uh you know it's going. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's fucking going. It's it's trying yeah, to never get. Yeah, it is very interesting to kind of see there, but yeah, but pretty soon. I, I don't know if pretty soon, but obviously it will take us a couple months to get there. But pretty soon, the idea of us just not talking about Gintama will be a thing for real. Zen until at least those spinoffs come out, <laughs> and then we can come back to talk about that. But. In terms of actual Shonen Archive, it'll be it'll feel weird when we no longer talk about Gintama as our main one. I know it's gonna be crazy, man. Yeah, definitely. But that's enough way uh, waxing. But the, for now, that's another five episodes down. Like I said, I literally just told you six episodes next week, one seventy one to one seventy six. I will be sure to. It doesn't matter if it looks like I might be a little bit busy next week. I will be sure to watch those six episodes in time because now that I see how close we are, it's it, it's one of those things. After you get like a good arc of Gintama, I just want to continue, and I just want to keep reaching it to get to more of that good stuff. <laughs> I don't want to stop. Know, right? It's crazy. Yeah, it is maybe the toughest part about like this series is that we acknowledge like, yeah, we could probably if we actually base it off of how much do we want to continue. We could barrel through a lot of these in, like, a go. But I don't think that would be the right way of doing it. Because <laughs> there would be so much oh, to talk about. Yeah. So I think this Probably is the best not. way of doing it. For the best way of talking about episodes, I think this works perfectly fine. Uh, but yeah, that's the end of Shonen Archive for this week. As always, you can follow Zen on Zen's channel so you can see Shonen and Chill to catch up to the... All the lading, all the latest going on in uh, Shonen Jump World, except for One Piece. He hasn't caught up yet. Get, we'll get, no. you'll get. <laughs> but don't worry. Once he gets there, that's when we'll. That's when you'll be able to record Shonen and Chill, extra chill with me, where we can talk about the new One Piece. <laughs> that's when uh, that will come out. Get ready for it. But if you want just actual, <laughs> real ass Shonen Chill. That actually has a consistent schedule, unlike <laughs> Shonen Archive, you can go over to Zed's channel. And as for me, on my channel, um, 
We just finished a whole bunch of the 13 Nights of Halloween. I'm going to be not taking a break because I will still make videos here and there. But I definitely need like a, a breakdown, which is what I always need. I need like a break after 13 Nights of Halloween. It's always very stressful to actually record and get together and do all that stuff for 13 Nights. Um... But don't worry, there's plenty of videos out there, um, literally, for, uh, I think that playlist is almost 24 hours long. Um, most of that is because me and Common recorded a three-hour video, uh, <laughs> that, that we both did not think would take three yeah. hours. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, uh, but Common said, like, hey, we could just do this, which was do a silly fun tier list based off of Fago, and we were like, you know what? It was supposed to be a han a handful of units, and then it turned into a lot of units. And then around the two hour mark, I said this was a mistake. And then Common said, "Yes, it was, but we're we're two hours deep. <laughs> we have to keep going." <laughs> so by the end of the third, no. But thankfully, uh, thankfully, all the people from the original um, modcast days are as crazy as we are, Zen. <laughs> So they usually know what they're thank signing goodness. up for. Yeah. Thank goodness. Good old Modcast buddies always there at the end. And yeah, that's it for Shonen Archive this week. Hopefully again next week I will be sure that there will be more Gintama, there will be more Jujutsu Kaisen, and I will do my damnedest to make sure that we also get some Kurogo's best. If I did uh if it wasn't for work telling me like, hey, there's a lot of work on this specific day then I would uh, gladly say, hey, maybe Kuroko next week too. But you know what? It's it's in there. Both me and Zen think about it all the time. We just have to make the time and schedule for it. That's it. Yeah, Kuroko, always on the mind. Yes, what it is. is. If you ever think what like, hey, here? they forgot about it, I never forget. <laughs> I literally don't. I, it's always in the back. Wokies never forget. No, you have no idea how crazy my memory is. Actually, we've talked about this before. That's actually maybe the funniest thing when it comes to recording is that you have a more like a... Oh, like when I tell you like, hey, remember this thing that happened like seven years back? And you go like, no. <laughs> no, no, I don't. <laughs> it, remind me real quick. And it's like, yeah, okay. That's why we're the perfect duo. Because I'll be like, hey, remember that one time when someone stole all the CS from <laughs> the Reddit? I do remember that, actually. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 grief, the, the, grie the Griever arc of the Yeah, no, that guess. was crazy. That was a yeah. wild time. Oh, it was a wild time. Do you remember I'm Your Freaking Leader? <laughs> No, that I don't remember. Damn! Oh, man. Okay, we're gonna have to talk. Wait. Yes, maybe I do. Didn't he, like, have other people that went with him, and then he, like, yelled at them? That's yeah, that was... this is, like, yeah. deep, deep... Mo yeah, he was in the team-building mega thread. I want to say. Someone who helped in that. Sasha? I don't think we've ever talked about this publicly. Maybe this is not a good idea. <laughs> but you remember <laughs> I'm your freaking leader? <laughs> um... Just because it's obvious that was years ago. We don't have any beef with them now. <laughs> that would be silly to do it now. <laughs> but anyway, that's the end of Shonen Archive, everyone. Thank you very much for watching, and we will be back next week. Say goodbye. Oh, and also, if you want to see more streams, it should be Monday. I'll also be sure to try and be there Monday as well for more Pokemon. I should. I need to upload the Pokemon stuff. I'll remember that. Till next time, yeah, everyone. We need, to, we need to finish that game. Yes, we do. We 100% need to finish that game. Till next time, everyone. Me and Zen will see you guys. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, everybody. Peace!